And we're back with another episode. Um, yeah, the whole gang's here. Me, Kyle, and Zane. Zane can't really say hi right now. He's doing computer stuff. But um, yeah, we were going on Instagram Live a lot. And every time we go on, people are like, where's the podcast? Where's the podcast? And, you know, we've said this a million times. But when we're doing the podcast, I feel like no one listens. So what's the point? But then when we stop, everyone's like, where is it? I love it. So we're feeling motivated. And I think we have a lot of like little silly nonsense to talk about today. You had like more momentum going into the fight because you did some like lives, you mm-hmm. had a post. You were a little more socially, uh, social media active. Yeah. Content queen. Content queen. Yeah. So we're back. I just fought like two weeks ago today. Um, obviously I didn't win, but I feel really good. I feel healthy. It was like the first fight I think I've ever had, like where I wasn't even really sore the next day. I had one thing like right after the fight. I felt great. And then as soon as we walked back to the hotel, I was like, look, I was like, my elbow hurts. And I looked down and my elbow was super swollen. And like out of nowhere, I couldn't like bend my arm. And I was like, oh, I definitely I don't remember anything happening in the fight. But I was like, oh, it's definitely broken. Like you could see it getting growing bigger. And I couldn't like touch my face. I couldn't bend my arm and lift it up to touch my face or or my hair. Um, And then the next day, it like was a little bit better and then literally like two days later it was completely fine so i think it was just a random bruise but it was super weird because you remember how bad it was that yeah. night i was like oh it's definitely broken and you're like should we go to the hospital thank god we didn't i was just thinking i'm like, you're like i don't want to go to the hospital in miami i was like miami hospital sounds terrifying i don't have a lot of hospital experience so it just seems like time consuming but um but yeah other than that you know obviously bummed i wish the fight would have gone differently it was like a weird fight for me but I mean I felt really prepared and I felt like really good going in I felt like even though I might not get to show it I think that like a lot of the stuff that I worked on helped me in the fight you know but um yeah I think Macy just had a good game plan and you know it's tough when you're always fighting at the top some sometimes you have a good night sometimes it doesn't go your way and that's just kind of the reality of it I think that this was like uh, like how I hand I handled this loss I think the best just because it was like I don't know I don't know if that's just like maturing or experience where you realize like when you lose it sucks because obviously you want to win but I think that you realize like life goes on and there's more I hesitate to say that there's there's more to life than like a single fight Uh, but I think if I say that then people assume like oh you're just not into it you don't you're you're not you know as hungry as you used to be and that's not the case at all if I didn't want to do it I wouldn't do it I mean you see how hard I train I feel like each camp I train harder and more intense and smarter than the last one um that's just me and my competitive nature and how I like to train for fights so that's not the case but life does go on you know whether you win or lose is same shit on Monday morning I mean a little less money but other than that everything's the same um yeah yeah the preparation was good but uh yeah life goes on like you said but uh we did have some fun in Miami mm-hmm. we had a lot of friends family go more than any other fight ever yeah it was really nice I had like you know our closest friends came, which that was another thing. It's like after the fight, like everyone's like, if you don't want to go out, I'm like, no, like I want to celebrate. Like, obviously it would have been way more fun if I won, but like the fact that I had like my closest friends and my family, you know, it's a, it's super expensive to, you know, the tickets were crazy flight hotel, like staying there and everything. And it was like, I was so appreciative of like all my friends coming and like, being so excited just to be there like I thought that was so nice so yeah we spent like a couple days after there which was super fun it was kind of like our adult spring break but uh Zane was there which was amazing I love that uh Zane got to meet all of our other friends but I thought we had a great time yeah it was super fun food wasn't that great in Miami I know I was 
super excited to go for like like a food tour. I wanted to hit up like a lot of like the famous Miami spots. But I think what I realized is I think a lot of those famous spots that you see that are like turned into like like a scene after mm -hmm. or during they're kind of like just like more like a scene that also has like kind of food they're it's like not necessarily club restaurant type club of vibe. restaurants yeah what's the one place that we went to after uh with uh natalia uh it's a casadona casadona that was the best one that we went to and it was still like the vibe and the atmosphere was so like it was probably like the coolest like most stunning restaurant i've ever been to the food was really good, but it wasn't didn't blow my mind. But the atmosphere blew my mind. Yeah, like the atmosphere is so sick. You're expecting it to be amazing, but it was just kind of like, OK. Yeah. The it next day, a couple of my the day of the fight before the fights, my a couple of my friends went there and they said they saw Dave Portnoy and um, my one friend wanted to wanted to go up to him and have him hold up a blonde fighter t-shirt and say like go she bomb have. fighter but she's like i wanted to but everyone else was like no leave him alone don't be annoying he's at a restaurant and she was i was like it was super funny it would have been funny if she did that she definitely should have yeah but it's crazy i mean you go out to a restaurant in miami everyone is like dressed to it's definitely different vibe than new york city Completely it feels like you're different. in a different country like it's crazy that they're like so close to each other but it's so different like like new york is more like low-key there it's like j glitz glam like they like, had a real dress code yeah like they would turn people away I, I didn't really know that about miami i thought like i always thought dress codes were like a thing of the past because everyone just wears whatever now i think that's just new york but in new york like streetwear just in streetwear right everywhere. and then like the outfit is made with like the accessories. It seems like a watch or mm -hmm. shoes or something where in the place in Miami, they have like legit like dress codes. Yeah. I think quiet luxury is a trend for New York, but Miami is loud luxury. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I like that. But I like it, it. It affects girls more because guys still could wear whatever kind of, but yeah, but you have to, uh, I think the guys there have to spend a lot more yeah it's crazy though like every girl looks like a like only fans instagram model like i'm talking like you're sitting in a restaurant and they're walking in and it's like a line of like 10 of them it's like so insane how many there are but um yeah the, but overall like the restaurants and stuff were really cool vibes and atmosphere but food was kind of whack it was just kind of all right it was okay it wasn't bad but we went to sexy fish after that was fun yeah that place was good we had a good table yeah there was zane like made it zane made it and then the guy sneeko was there sneeko nate diaz moneyberg jake yeah the squad eilina it was lena lasagna mako mako yeah that, that was, was a fun night that was really fun that was such a fun night um what else but yeah i mean that was from my i guess that was it we had a I tried a cuban sandwich when I was eating it, I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. And then when I was done, I was like, oh, my God, that's fucking disgusting. A little rich. It was too much. I think it was good just because I had a gummy. But so, like, as I was eating it, I was like, oh, I love it. But now, like, even now talking about it, it's kind of making me sick. I think in terms of, like, eating cities, like, nothing could really compete with New York, I don't think. I the only other one that I think is kind of you could get like really high quality. I think Vegas has some sick restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really like it's. I know this sounds stupid. It's not that I didn't know New York was so much better than everywhere else for food because that's like all people talk about. But I think we're just we go there all the time that I just thought like, I don't know, I didn't I have more appreciation for New York food now after going to Miami? Granted, we were only there going out for a couple of days, so we, and could we have been... went to like the like the hot spots. Yeah, maybe like they're like a smaller places are better food. Like I'm sure in New there York, is. I think that's the, like some of the coolest places are just some little random spot that has yeah. some specialty dish that's amazing. But I feel like we kind of went to like the towel and catch of exactly. Miami, exactly. which is like you know if you go to those places. In New York, the food's definitely good, but it's not like you're paying for the the scene too. Exactly. But yeah. uh, but yeah, we had a really good time, a lot of fun, and then 
since we've been back, we've been enjoying all the foods that I haven't had in the last few months. Uh, we went to the city. We had that JG Melon burger, which I thought was fire. Super good. Really like simple, like simple burger. So good. Um, and we also found a new pizza place near us. Uh, what is it called? Nico's? Yeah. Yeah. Nico's Pizza. It's like a food truck at a brewery, but they only it's like it sounds like it's cool because it's exclusive. But I think they just don't really have it down right. But like they only do pies on like some Fridays and Saturdays and they start at noon and they go till they run out of pies. They don't have that many. It's like a little food truck kind of hidden. I think definitely it's, the best pizza I've had on Long Island. though. So good. It's crispy. I love it. We got like the regular one with burrata. Oh my God. It's so, it was like one of those, you know, when you're eating a food and you're like, I don't care how many calories are in this or how uncomfortably full I got, I get right now. It's so worth it. That's how I felt eating that pizza. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. good. I love the scale that uh Portnoy uses for pizza where he says like an eight and above is worth traveling for because it's such like a telling thing. Like if something's worth traveling for, it, it's super good because mm -hmm. most pizza like everywhere like if it's in the sevens like on his scale it's like definitely really good but it's like eh, whatever that's how i feel like every pizza in long island is like it's all like just eh, pretty good yeah but this one's like legit this one's legit, yeah, legit. someone had dm me about it and they're like oh i was how was that i was looking at it but i i'm like 40 minutes 45 minutes worth away it. i was like oh it's definitely worth it it's a little annoying to get but it's worth it like you know if you have the time yeah but then, yeah, so after my fight, so I've been, obviously, I've, like, made my post about everything that, like, we've been doing the past year and kind of just my whole, like, journey to, like, getting to the fight and, like, a lot of things that people don't see. And uh, it's so funny because, like, the most things people ask. I basically, I talked about, and I showed a before and after picture, if you haven't seen it on my Instagram and I basically said I started around like in the summertime around August. I was probably about 170 pounds. I don't I didn't see that number. I am like kind of guesstimating. I was around there around there. And then, um, yeah, day before the fight, I made 125 and it was my easiest weight cut. The least amount of weight I had to cut like the night before. But I think because I started so heavy. I was like nervous about it because I always cut a lot of weight and have a hard weight cut. So I think that starting so early kind of helped a little bit. Um, you know, just getting those extra weeks of the of my diet, I think helped. But uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like I was like hesitant to post about like everything I've gone through for the past year doing like fertility treatments and all that. But uh it's weird. There's like something about me. I was like, I was really proud of myself for obviously training for the fight and fighting and it didn't, didn't go my way, but just everything in the past year. And that was like the first time that I was like, Oh, I want to make a post. Cause like, I don't know. I'm proud of, I'm proud of myself. Like everything you else. Never is just, say that. I know, but it's just, it's so crazy. And like people don't know and they just like criticize you and stuff all the time and I don't think that people understand and it's just you know it makes me think I'm like you don't know what anyone else goes through and, right. and what they're doing and I'm kind of relating it just to fighters in general but I mean anyone out there but um I just kind of felt like talking about the infertility it's like a weird taboo thing to talk about everyone keeps it private and obviously like we did for so long but uh I don't know. I think that like if you talk about it, it could help other people. And I just think like even for me, like going through it, like I'll go on TikTok and follow like other girls that are going through fertility treatments. And I swear to God, I've learned more from the girls posting their experiences on TikTok than I have from definitely more than my doctor and definitely more than just like research online, like fo following people and just seeing like there's girls that just kind of post all the time what they do and just seeing like, Oh, okay. They did this. They did that. Or wow, this is this. It like helped me so much. And, but there's not a lot of them out there. So you're following like only like a few girls on TikTok. Think about how many people post on TikTok, 
but like the fertility people that like post like what they're doing there's only a few on there and I like follow all of them and it's so helpful like it's insane but uh so that's kind of why I was just like I don't know like I'm someone that's like balanced doing it and balancing like a career at the same time. And obviously I'm not the only one doing that. So like a lot of the girls on TikToks I follow are, you know, some have other jobs and um, some, some have other jobs. Some are just like not working, staying at home. And it's just the experience is so different for everyone. So I thought opening up could kind of help people. And I just like, talking about it because I think that kind of makes it a little bit easier to go through but uh yeah and so I posted about it and just how like going through IVF doing all that stuff for you know nine months and uh, how it affected my body and I think that's all that was a lot of the weight gain and uh going off the meds getting back to normal shape and then getting back into fight shape so it was almost like two camps and um yeah I'm proud of myself for doing that and uh yeah, I just kind of wanted to sometimes I feel like people like the behind the scenes stuff. And that was really That's behind. pretty behind. <laughs> it's pretty behind the scenes. And um, after posting it, like the amount of messages I got, like from other people saying that, like, oh, my God, thanks for posting this. It was just like it made me think like, oh, my God, I feel like I should talk more about it because it was insane. Usually, you know how it is. Everyone on the Internet is like just hating right. all the time, has something negative to say. It was like. Definitely my most engaged post I think I've oh ever posted. God, yeah. And I really don't think like I've read every single comment on it. Yeah. And I don't think there was like I think maybe there was like two or three negative ones, but they were like bot negative ones. Right. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I don't know. I just thought it was I was like happy that I posted it. And then seeing the outcome makes me think like, I don't know, maybe I should talk about it more. But We'll see. Taking it day by day. It's a lot to no, that digest. Was powerful. I think a lot of people were really uh, impacted by that. Yeah. They, it was powerful. Yeah. So that's pretty. Uh, what'd you say? No, I have a note. I wanted to make sure that. I know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, two notes that we'll do when we bring up our current events. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. But, um, yeah, I kind of get back. The only thing is, like, I've been eating so bad i said i was gonna like do whatever for a week and now it's two, it's weeks. two weeks now i was like fuck i'm gonna do it i'm gonna um, monday i'm gonna start and now i'm like okay next monday so i really want to get back on my ground because i worked so hard to like lose all my weight and like stay in shape obviously i'm not gonna be like walking around like 125 but i want to get back on it not only because like i want to stay in shape but like i just felt like even before i started camp and was doing like my strict diet and like this kind of like new lifestyle of like eating healthy and ba having like a really good relationship with food and balance and and all that I kind of uh I want to get back on that because it makes me feel really good yeah no I totally agree it's fun doing like food tours like we did in the city the other day but yeah in general we gotta definitely just feel better we gotta limit it eat. back to like we were doing it once like a month maybe. yeah no once every other week I was gonna say we were doing it like once not once a week but not once every, like once every yeah, other once week every other week you could do that when you're doing bad but zane we went and did our food tour and i remember i wrote this down i was so annoyed we went and uh part mm -hmm. of our food tour we got a gelato and i went and i sampled it and it was a dark chocolate gelato which is one of my favorites my probably my favorite like the real like black one you know and they scooped out and as they're giving it to me they said oh this is vegan or this is non-dairy, this non-dairy vegan. And so instantly, like it would have been impossible for me to like that. Like I'm so turned off by like artificial desserts. Yeah. And vegans. It's not healthy if it's vegan. So then you, they had like 12 different gelatos and like seven of them were non-vegan or were vegan. Like vegan is not gelato. It's, it's yeah get your own thing right it's not ice cream, it's not ice, cream. No. ice cream is no by definition well, they, could, they could say the non -vegan. the fruit ones are always are always well, that's vegan. right you could have a sorbet a sorbet yeah but by definition there's no such thing as vegan gelato that's an oxymoron i think that they whichever ones are just naturally vegan they could do that and then i think maybe have like two flavors of vegan if because they had like 20 25 flavors 
But half. There was literally half. No, there like was an insane amount. The, the, I think they had 25 favorites. There was like 12 were vegan. Mm-hmm. But it's the same as kind of like if you went to a bar and they had 12 non-alcoholic beers. Yeah. Like by definition, beer has alcohol. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. So like you could have maybe one. It would have to be advertised as a alcohol-free bar. Right. But I mean, there's places that have like, uh, what are they called? Um, mocktails. Mocktail. Yeah, but like you said, I think it's the, the number of it. You could have some, but you can't have like 12 non-alcoholic beers. I'm, but if you offer one. I'm just so turned off by that direction. It like scares me because th- then you could go to like a burger place and they have, you know, half the burgers are fake meat burgers. Yeah. Well, they're probably. Like by definition, a burger is meat. Bill Gates would love that. Yeah, but non even if it tasted amazing, I still would have been like pretended that I didn't like it because it actually did taste OK. But I'm just so turned off by the idea. And the direction well, that's why that. the one time I got those cookies, there's I forget what they're called. Lorraine. Sweet, uh, I don't know. I forget what they're called. Everyone. You probably know them. They're like white and pink wrapper. They have them in the grocery store. It's like pre-made cookie dough. And you break it apart. But whatever. So they, I made them and I didn't tell Kyle what they were. And I was like, try one of these. And he's like, oh, my God. These are amazing. I love these. These are crazy. Sweet Lawrence. Sweet yeah. And uh, I was like, he goes, they're, they're amazing. I'm like, they're vegan and gluten free. And, and he was like, what? Because if I would have told him that before, he would have said, I, I can tell. It. I can tell. I know they're not good. So I purposely have to like tell him after. And I didn't get them because they're vegan. I just got them because I'm like, I don't know. They're in the store. They look good. And those are fire. Yeah, they for are. like an at-home one, uh, they're pretty good. You yeah. couldn't tell, but you have a definitely if something. I is, have an aversion for vegan products. Like you just won't. unless it's like an apple. Well, yeah, yeah. A, Those are naturally vegan. Yeah, like a product that's originally not. Yeah, if you give me a vegan watermelon, I'm not going to complain. It's funny you say that. I was about. This is kind of off topic of of um, non-alcoholic beers. So I've been watching. Uh, the latest season of Vanderpump Rules. Mm -hmm. It's like a girl thing. Do you know about it? No. Okay. But anyway, so I noticed a lot of the characters on the thing, they're like trying to not drink. And all you see is they're just crushing Heineken Zero or Heineken Zero or Heineken, whatever. Heineken has a non-alcoholic beer. And it's like, oh, they're like, oh, they're just drinking it every time they're together. And I'm like, it's obviously like an ad for Heineken. I think because, you know, people are trying are definitely not drinking as much as they were before people that go out socially too um it's like almost kind of like trending now or it's like cool to not drink alcohol yeah you know but um i saw that they were posting i'm like i when i go through phases of like like i don't really drink as much as i definitely i don't drink a lot definitely not as much i used to drink a lot not like a not like a problem but like a lot socially Mm -hmm. And like now I definitely don't. You don't even, drink hardly at all. Yeah. Like even when it, first it started like maybe like two, three years ago, like I just would only drink if we were like really going out or doing something fun with like a bunch of people. And then, um, but I would still drink sometimes. And then like now I like rarely do. Drinking's just like, it's just not worth how I feel the next day. I can't yeah. like waste a day. I don't have like a day to waste being hung over. Yeah, that's how I felt at first. And then it got to the point where even if I just have like two drinks and I'm not drunk or, you know, I don't even really feel it the night before the next day, I'm not hung over like throwing up on my bed or like on the couch all just day. tired. But I just feel off. And then I like I don't really like I never get anxiety really. But I can, I'm like, oh, that's what anxiety feels like. They call it anxiety. Uh And the next morning I kind of don't, I'm like, almost feel, I get this weird feeling of guilt. I get this. I don't know what it is. If I, I feel like I'm like going to get, like I'm a little kid. I'm going to get in trouble. Like, oh, like I got, I'm going to get in trouble for drinking or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Like a guilt, like a guilty feeling like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. And it would get to the point where I'd have one or two drinks and that would happen. And I'm like, ugh. It's like it's not that big of a deal. Like I can shake it off the next day and go throughout my day, but it's just like annoying. And then when I started over the past couple months, like when I really started like tracking food and all that, I was like, it's not worth it. I'd rather use that for those like calories for food. 
Of course. Because yeah. even like a low calorie, like if you get like a tequila soda, it's still, if you have three of them, it's 300 calories. I'd rather have an ice cream cone and like not feel like shit the next day. Yeah. But, oh, speaking of tequila, I have a funny story to tell you. Go ahead. I haven't told you this yet. I kind of like told Zane, but I wanted to wait. This happened today, so that's why I wanted to wait to the podcast to tell you. Um, I got scammed online. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's not like that bad. Money? It's, huh? Yeah. You got scammed out of money. Yeah. Stop it. Yes. Oh, you bought. It's not yeah. like that bad. It's not like, oh, someone stole my identity like that. I you just sent someone money. I sent someone money. <laughs> and I think That's they so played embarrassing. a tr- It's so embarrassing. I, I don't always say, to- oh my God. I always say, like, when I, I'm obsessed with like those <laughs> cult documentaries or like when scam artists, you know, like we've yes. talked about this a million times. I'm like, how could anyone ever get scammed by anything ever? I always time? say that and I got scammed. How? <laughs> okay. So there's this tequila that I really like. Um, it's called Fortaleza and it has no additives, but it's like, it's like, there's not a lot of tequilas that have no additives and they're really, I don't know the, I'm going to mess this up, but basically when they make it, they can't make as much because they're not putting like shit in it. So they can't make as much as the bigger brands do. So when it's hard to get, yeah, it's just hard to get. It's not that it's necessarily like crazy expensive, but like when a liquor store gets it, they might only get like two bottles. So they get scammed. So I follow Fortaleza on Instagram and they made a picture or they posted a picture and I liked it. And someone, someone put something in the comments. I don't know. I saw and then I said something and I commented on it. This is getting embarrassing. I commented on it. And I was like, so good, but so hard to get. It sucks. Because like, I, it is really. This is on their official page. Yeah, this is okay. on Fortalage's page. And I was like, oh my God, so good. And then I saw in the comments, people were like, oh, I have it. Or like, you can contact this person. And it was like a liquor's Instagram. So I was like, oh my God, that's so smart. It's like, it was like too like. I think old ladies, it wasn't like a big Instagram and it was like a liquor store and they're like, Oh, we have like they they had certain liquors that they were selling online. So they put like that. They had the Fortaleza, they had the Blanco and the, and the Repo and Añejo. Okay. So they had them. I was like, Oh my God, sick. This liquor store has it and I can get it. They can ship it to me. So I was like, cool. I was like, how, I was like, how, how much? And it was like the normal price. It was like $10 more a bottle. So I was like, okay. How, how much is that? They're like usually like 60, 60, 80, or like between 60 and $80 a bottle. Okay. So, but like, you know what I mean? So it's definitely more expensive than other things, but it's not as expensive as like Don Julio okay. or Classe as well. But, um, I was like, oh, okay. And they're like, we have both. And I was just going to get the Blanco. And I was like, oh, well, if they have it, it's so hard to get. I was like, I'll get one Blanco and one Repo. So I was like, I'll get two bottles. And they're like, okay. And it's uh, $20 extra for for shipping. I was like, okay, cool. And they're like, so you could just, I'm like, they're like, you could just Zelle. We do Zelle or Cash App or whatever. I'm like, okay. And I bought like things online, like girl stuff. It's like, so this isn't didn't seem that weird. I was so excited. I sent it to like Eilina, my, my friend. And I was, she was like, oh my God, I had to tell her today. And she didn't buy it. Um, so yeah, I sent them the money and then they're like, okay, that was like last weekend. And then Monday they text me and they're like, hey, you didn't, you have to uh, con- make confirm on the email, the shipping, the, per- the shipping people or whatever. They're like, we made the label. They're like, we can't ship it until you confirm something with the shipping company and I was like oh, okay so I went on and I'm like I confirmed it they're like we haven't heard from you I'm like what the fuck I was like yo I confirmed it like I don't know what to tell you Saturday are you sending send it tonight I send you the money I send me your address that's not how it works like I thought this was like someone just selling a couple bottles so they yeah. were just gonna I'm like yo just send it to me and then um had to go back I'm like I didn't get the email I didn't get the email so I'm like try my other email they got it I confirmed like okay because we can't send it out and right away I was like dude what do you mean you can't send? I order so much shit online. I make purchases way like it's embarrassing. Yeah. I've ne- I bought things from like I bought stuff off like DHgate from like China and that's like so like sketch. But like 
so I know all how all these shipping things work. And they when they sent me this email, I'm like, I've never heard of this one. And they kept calling. <laughs> now it's like. <laughs> well, I wonder why they would keep calling once you send the money. Yeah. So then, is, well, because they, the, they want more. Here's where I'm getting to. So, and I knew something was up when they kept calling me dear and ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my! I was God. like, "This say, is so embarrassing." This is so embarrassing, and the if like it's so embarrassing, it gets worse. Okay. So then they sent it, and this was happening all week. I've been texting these people, and I'm like, kind of being mean to them on text, because then I was like, "Whatever, just send it." Like, I don't at this point. Like, I bought two bottles, so it was like basically like two hundred bucks. And I was like, "All right, like it sucks, but like, what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna like keep talking to right. you, like." I'll lose $200, not like my social battery isn't going to be wasted talking to you over right. text for like a week. But I did. And then they texted me today. They, today. They, <laughs> today. I've been texting them all week. And today they were like, oh, for the, it's so embarrassing. I can't even say it. Say it. So they're like, the, the shipping company keeps emailing you. You have to respond. And then they said they needed per package so per bottle they needed a special like case so they don't break so it's a refundable case so it's $50 per per package but I get it once it's delivered I get it refunded (laughs) are you kidding me (laughs) so I sent another (laughs) are you serious I sent another hundred dollars today. I was like getting so far. Cause I'm like, whatever. They keep sending me these emails. <laughs> and then, it's so embarrassing. I need like another fight. I need more things to do. Maybe like if I don't focus on fighting, it's, it's like not very good. But anyway, so I sent them there, whatever. They're like, okay, we're going to miss delivery today. I'm like, Oh really? Like it's 1 PM. It's going to get delivered today but you needed me to pay you for these shipping containers, but I get it refunded. I was like, and I even said, I was like, you never said this in the beginning. I, whatever. So but I paid it. So then this happened like two hours ago. Now it's supposed to be delivered today. Obviously it's not coming. They said before they can do delivery, I need to pay for $200 for insurance. I didn't don't, do that. I stopped. You gotta stop. I stopped. I <laughs> stopped. Don't send people money. I know. Okay. Okay. It's embarrassing. But like I buy like stuff on like Facebook marketplace and Etsy and all these type of places. And it's like not that I whatever. I seemed legit. I didn't think they were going to like scam. I thought scam would be like, oh, buy a vacation or something like this. I didn't think it was going to be like for a sixty five dollar bottle of tequila. And then like I looked and I typed up like I Googled like scam uh for Teleza and it was like and it said like uh reddit there was like i didn't open it but there was like a headline like scam like instagram whiskey scams <laughs> so i told them so i've been fighting with them now now i'm like i'm not sending you this 200 dollars insurance and they're like but and i was like you can just cancel my order i know i'm not getting my money back but i just said it <laughs> i was like you can just cancel my order like i i was like you didn't tell me about this and they're like you it's already been shipped you need to do this please ma'am you need to do this and i'm like no i'm like i don't have two hundred dollars i was like i i was like i would pay it but i don't have it and i've just been texting them all day long about this and they're like they won't stop texting me why don't you tell me this because this happened today and then i was like i wanted to save it for the podcast so this is the last they said for your info, because I told them, I'm like, then I got pissed. I was like, you guys are scamming. I know what you're doing. Did you like send them your driver's license? No, 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 no. I didn't send them any information. Sure? Like, yes. Um, so they're like, whatever. So they're going and they're like, I told them, like, I know this is a scam. I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. And I was like, I would send it to you, but I just don't have $200. I was like, you know what? And I don't appreciate this. I was like, I'm going to tell, I told them I'm going to put them on blast on my Instagram and tag their Instagram and I'm going to tell everyone. And I had so many friends that would have bought from them. Whatever. And then they're like, I'm not a scam. This one goes, this is the last message. For your info, we were scam as, as you just said. I won't have come writing here to you, man. Okay, now that I'm reading it, it's like even worse because I just got so furious. And he goes, 
I'm ma'am, I'm from a Christian home. I'm a Christian. I do not intend to take your table to mine. I swear to God. We are legit and please trust the process and you won't re- and you won't regret it. I have children. I believe in karma. What <laughs> platform did you send them the money on? Zell. Which is fine. Like what I didn't give him any information. It's fine. I've already looked at it. But whatever. So I got scammed out of three hundred dollars. I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> it like not the it's money. so embarrassing. Not the money at all. It's just so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. There, I mean, I, like I know you'd be like, "Well, it could happen to anyone." No, it can't. It cannot happen to me. <laughs> There's no one in the world who could scam me. There's no possible way. I feel. No, you couldn't. I could. No, you couldn't. I could. No, I, oh I don't God. believe anything. <laughs> Nothing. I don't believe anything. Well, you could get scammed like, yeah, I guess that then it wouldn't be a scam. It would just be like someone stealing. Someone from you. would steal from Cause me. Because I was like, you wouldn't notice certain things. Yeah, it's not no, saying you no wouldn't notice money. No one could trick me into doing something. There's no possible. Okay, way. well, honestly. No, I'm not, nothing against you. A lot of people get scammed. You know what the real issue is? But that's is. Like, a, like almost like a flex of mine. I don't believe anything. <laughs> but you know what the root of my issue was? What? I have like an online shopping addiction. Because I just do it so much and so fast that I was like, you know what I mean? Now I'm like thinking. But don't send people like if they're like, we need your seed phrase for your crypto account. I'm not going <laughs> to give anyone a password. That's obviously a scam. This, I just did it right away. I shouldn't have done. The first 200 wasn't that weird. It wasn't like a crazy scam. And then I was like, the second 100 was stupid. But I was just like, ugh. Like, I, right? Is this, I'm like, well, whatever. I'm already down the 200. Should I pay the under to maybe get it or not? And then I was like, as soon as the second I sent it, I was like, they did nothing even happen yet. It was just a second I pressed send. I'm like, oh, I now I know it's a scam. Like, yeah. I just know. Whatever. So that's my story. And I'm sorry. But whenever people call me like for things and they're like, trying to like uh, telemarketers or whatever, I like to get them on the phone and be like, well, we can reduce your uh, taxes by this much. I'm like, I don't think that's right. Like, well, no, we can do it if you do this or that. or And it could be totally legit or just some type of thing. But I'm like, I just don't want to reduce my taxes. I want to make sure that I'm paying the absolute most. Mm-hmm. I want to be a contributing member. I don't want to pay less than someone else. I just don't think that's fair. <laughs> he does this. <laughs> or but- like they'll call about like, like always- Hampton's house. I get phone calls about buying that. Oh, all time. yeah, yeah. They'd be like, well, we can offer bigger above market off uh, above market price cash. I'm like, I don't want to. I don't feel right about someone paying more than what it's worth. I wouldn't feel right. You guys paying more than that. Yeah. I just wouldn't feel right about it. Like I, I turn it. I flip it. You like continue to talk to him and like for and you'll put it on speaker. Oh, yeah. And like the first like min, I love the it. first like 30 seconds. I think it's like so funny. But you go on so long that I like lose interest and I have to go in another room and I'm like doing laundry and you're still on the phone mm-hmm. with the person like you will go at it. Yeah, I do that. I started doing that with the people that um, I was getting all those like text messages. Hey, the, the text messages like, Lucy. hey, Sarah, I had a gr- great meeting today. And I'm like, I go with it all the way. Yeah, but it does. It's not even fun because then they go after like two. I want to keep going, but then they're like, wait this isn't Sarah. And I'm like, yes, it is. Like, no, it's not. I'm like, well, how do you know it's not? You thought it was, you know, or sometimes you get those AI calls and they're like, Hey, how are you today? And I know it's AI. And I'll be like, I don't give, cause they're only programmed to certain announcements. Like, Hey, and I instantly know it's AI. And I say, uh, banana nut muffin. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? (laughs) Like, Strawberry shortcake. <laughs> and I like, just say things like that. <laughs> I've only like seen that before. I've never gotten any, but I literally don't oh, I get an- them all but, the time. But I, I get them all the time, but I don't answer ever. So it's crazy. Do I have to worry about you like giving away all our money to like a Nigerian prince? <laughs> no, or- it was so stupid. That's why I didn't even, I wasn't even going to tell I you. I wish that. you didn't tell me that. <laughs> I really only like brought it up for for our listeners i think they would enjoy that story not the money just mm. how can that happen yeah i guess maybe the first one like if the it first one totally like, was normal like they'd be like oh why didn't you check i don't know i just did it the second one was there's no excuse because you could have just bought and then 
they didn't send they it. They didn't send it, and then you would, oh, fuck. Because I, I didn't buy it from, like. Because I probably bought something, and it hasn't come. And yeah. I wouldn't even know. Or, like, but, boxes get stolen right, right, yeah, off of, yeah, you know. Right, right, But, yeah, no, the second one, there's no excuse. That is really fucking upsetting. Yeah. Crazy. I'm sorry. Do you still love me? Yeah, but that's crazy. Do you look at me differently? No, I don't want CTE. To. CTE. You're probably high. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably were. <laughs> probably. Right? I don't know. Probably. I don't know. I am right now. So um, I don't know. That's crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> but there we go. What do we got? You got anything, Zane? Do you want to run through some current events? Didn't you say we had some? Nashville, Tennessee. There's a situation during with a certain police department. Oh, yeah. I saw that. I saw uh, Gary Nashville. Tony posted about that. Nashville? Yeah. The girl cop, the one who got ran through. Megan Hall. What Megan happened? Hall. So share what's going on with Megan Hall, Zane. You explain. I don't know what no, exactly. so, okay. So that girl, she was on a bunch of memes maybe like a year ago. Uh, oh, like I a, did remember like seeing that girl. And she was like in a police uniform. Mm-hmm. And she got fired because she like, I mean, she must have been like, having sex with all the workers, but like on the job time. Cause I can't imagine you'd get fired just for fucking your coworkers. Surely mm. that's not like, like legally allowed. I mean, I think you're allowed to, at, Yeah. you know, if they were like off duty, I'm sure that that's not like illegal. It's like but, that. But remember the, in the movie we watched the other night, silver lining. She was like, she got the girl, the crazy oh, yeah, Jennifer yeah, Lawrence. Yeah. What is it? Something silver lining. Silver yeah. And uh, Jennifer Lawrence, she in, in that right, one, right, right. She was like, uh, but work, maybe it was in the office or something. She said it was causing too much drama, and everyone's getting mad. Right. So They'll this this girl cop, Megan Hall, she fucked like her department, mm-hmm. like the guys that she worked with. But it must have been on the job, whatever. She got fired, and then it went viral, and there's like all these like mm-hmm. hilarious memes about it. And it was about a year ago. Yeah. Today I saw Zane. Zane, she sued. Who'd she sue? The city of Nashville. So she sued the city of Nashville Police Department for $500,000 and won, won the lawsuit because she said that she was groomed by these guys. Now, I'll tell you what, if you're like a fucking eight year old and someone grooms you into this or that, of course, that's a thing because you have like a malleable brain. Like it's horrible, right? That's a thing. Grooming. But isn't every relationship that's ever existed take some grooming like i had to groom you into liking me right like mm-hmm. you have to like sh- present yourself in a positive <laughs> manner like that's what these guys were doing they were like yeah they didn't like rape her yeah what does grooming mean to a 30 year old adult how are you groomed if you choose to, like she didn't allege that they like raped her or anything right they just convinced her to fuck isn't every exchange yeah mutual exchange you convincing someone to like yeah fuck you? of course is that grooming it's not illegal to like but like grooming is dating right yeah like you're presenting like your best version of yourself mm-hmm. and she won a lawsuit for that one thing about a thought she's always gonna get her bag uh, that was one of the craziest ones i've ever seen though yeah She's just like, whatever. That's really like being like, fuck it. I'm going to go people, all in. What are people saying? Are they all for her? No one saying- can believe it. The things I've seen, because it's the same thing. Like at what point it's kind of like, and I've probably get pushback on this, but like the term sexual trafficking, mm-hmm. like when I think sexual trafficking, I think like an of a abducted person and they're like sold on the black market, mm-hmm. this and that. But I think now the definition of sexual traffic is sex trafficking sometimes yeah. is like, let's say you find a girl online who's willing to fly to Dubai mm-hmm. and fuck you. So you pay her like $50,000, fly her yeah. to Dubai, do what you have to do. You trafficked her for a sexual yeah. act. So in the past, that exchange would be soliciting a prostitute, which is... Both people get in trouble. One, the girl is a prostitute. Mm -hmm. Illegal. Illegal. And the guy is a John who is soliciting a prostitute. Illegal. Illegal. So that's like 
they're both doing an illegal act, no prostitution, whether you think that's a good law or a bad law. Yeah, yeah, that's just how it is. But now they say that that guy is sex trafficker. Now he's a sex trafficker. That's a big thing to like say about it's someone. Such a big thing because then everyone's think, just like, oh, like I mean, that's probably like what happened with like Andrew Tate. It's, no, it's exactly. Everyone's like, he's a sex trafficker. I was like, is is he or like I'm not saying like I agree with that thing, but if there's two willing parties in the exchange and benefiting from it, like whether you agree with it or not, who cares? Right. So that word, like it, it, and same with grooming. Like there are definitely times where grooming occurs with little kids or something it's the worst thing ever they should fucking be killed Mm -hmm. but not for a 30 year old (laughs) adult who bangs her co-workers yeah those are guys that just have like good game yeah you know or she was just thirsty yeah yeah, because especially if she obviously it's different if she was like alleging that they had raped her. Or no, like that wasn't at her. all. The, the, but, the, the, the accusation was grooming. Yeah, that's like if it said that, then I would understand that. I'm not right. saying. But if they forced her, threatened her or drugged her, of course, then they should go to jail for the rest of their life. Yeah, like grooming. I think of like kids that were like, you know what I mean? Like children. Of course. I don't know. There needs to be like. Yeah. But she won a lawsuit. They had sex on duty. On duty. So that's why they got That's fired. why she got in trouble originally. Yeah. Because off duty, but surely wait, did, you could do what Did you all want. the guys get in trouble too? Then they'd have no one left at the at, to work at this department. Well, maybe there was other people. I think the guys got fired too because it was on duty. She, they could say the same thing. They could right. be like, they should all sue and be like, um, she groomed me, and then that's right. it. So they could all get their bag. Yeah, they should say that she groomed them. She admitted she got desperate. She got desperate. She what? Said, I got stupid. I got desperate. I guess. And guys are guys. They'll stick their dick in anything. That's what her quote was. <laughs> wow, that's pretty accurate though. Uh. Did she was married too, right? Yep. I wonder if she's still married. She said, Me and my husband were on the verge of divorce and I just cracked and then it got out of hand. Open relationship? I wonder if they rekindled. Maybe he probably did after she got the money. Yeah, right. Once that settlement goes through, he's gonna be a little bit more forgiving. Five hundred grand? Mm. Probably. I mean, that's a pretty easy 500 grand. You just got to bang some guys. Yeah. I'm going to get uh, Pablo real quick. Keep you guys talking. That's crazy. That's wild, Zane. Do you I'm have. Playing. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about uh, while she's away. Kurt, NCAA Greg Kurt wrestling. Fleet won and uh, Richard Figueroa just won. Arizona State. Arizona State. So. I was talking to some people about this. What do you think? You follow it like enough. Do you, right now there's with uh, the way the NCAA wrestling is, there's no, you're really, you're just competing for second place. Right. And I think that's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. What I think would be the next like uh, exciting thing that could happen. Do you think there'll be a time that Penn state has 10 national champions every weight class from Penn state? That's tough because they do have recruiting holes from what I understand. I think that it's inevitable that they will have 10 national champions as long as like the coaching staff stays intact. I think that that will absolutely happen at some point. You think there's no like way of any other coaching staff catching up remotely? Oh, no, not catching up. I think that they'll have 10 national champions like this year. They'll have six. Which once you have six, then it just it becomes so I mean, it already is, but it's so viral. Like they can't really lose anyone else. They're they're not going to lose recruits. The only recruits that would go there would be the ones that wouldn't think that they'll be able to start. Yes, that makes sense. You know, that's the 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 biggest thing that they have going against them. It would be a recruit not wanting to go there because they think that oh, I'll never even get in the lineup. I think they'll eventually. I think it'll be very reasonable for them. I'm sure that's their goal, but I think they'll have ten national champions at some point. I mean, maybe though. They're losing. They're losing two of their best wrestlers this year. Aaron Brooks and Sirachi. They're both graduating. Well, I think Sirachi has another year of eligibility, technically, if you wanted. But 
because that whole weird. I think they do. But uh, still, though, they've they're there's the pipeline is full. I think at some point they'll have ten national champs. But whatever, we won't bore people with the wrestling talk. Anything else? Any other uh, current events that you guys want to talk oh, about? Oh, one thing I want to quick talk about is um, Kate Middleton. Oh yeah. So when everyone, so like a week ago, everyone was talking about how like all the all the drama about how uh, what was it? I thought I turned the mic off. <laughs> all the drama about her not posting and she yeah, was missing yeah. and uh, you know then she posted a picture with her kids and they could f- found out it was like photoshopped. Yes, they're horrible photoshops. Yeah, so this happened the week after my fight. I know a couple of people had messaged me and they were like, are you following the Kate Middleton drama and like the conspiracy theories? I didn't, and I was like, first of all, it was the week after my fight. It was the week after my fight. So I was like not on my normal routine and focusing and like, cause usually I'm a big conspiracy person. I mean, I think everything's fucked up. What's the conspiracy here? I think they, they were like, why is she hiding? She's in hiding. They thought like maybe she died or something happened or whatever. And they were like, they're hiding it from us. And and I, right away people, like some of my friends were like, are you following it? Are you following? I'm like, usually I'm into that. I was like, I don't even know what's going on, but I was like, I'm not interested. I'm like, what's the, who cares? Like, you haven't seen no one's seen her in three three months i'm like she either got plastic surgery or she's sick Mm -hmm. like there's a reason why like why does she have to post and then they're like she photoshopped it i'm like yeah because everyone was talking shit so she posted a picture and then everyone's like oh that's crazy oh i had all these crazy conspiracy theories i don't even know what they thought but they just thought it was so messed up and then it comes out one week later that unfortunately she has cancer and is undergoing chemotherapy and everyone's like oh i'm like duh like what did you think like she came out and said that yeah like she, on video? yeah she went like did a video and you could oh, she like wow. looks really sad she's like that's why i haven't been what like basically posting and everyone was shocked and i was like dude i was i'm into every conspiracy theory any little like thing i'm like so into but that one when people were getting into it like people were like oh so what do you think oh it's so so much i'm like Right away, I was just like, no, it's kind of like aliens for me, like aliens. I'm like, I don't I don't care. Not that for this, I didn't care. But I'm like, obviously, she's sick or maybe she got fucking BBL. Well, because like that would have been hard. Like it was definitely going to come to light at some point. Yeah. Like you couldn't just Mm -hmm. go. We don't know where she is. There was like, I think Blake Lively and a couple other like celebrities uh, even issued a thing. They're like apologizing for like posting like that they think it's weird or a funny meme or something or or talking about people are like talking shit on her for photoshopping or kids that it's so messed up. And, uh, but even someone like her, they apologize because a lot of people are like, Oh, I feel bad. I was like, well, didn't you think that like, People just love a c- conspiracies so much. I and love they're so fun. them. I love them too. But, you but got- it's just, it is funny how some just grab you so much mm-hmm. and then others are like, I don't care. Yeah. But with them, I, I love them. And I feel like I live by, I'm like a crazy conspiracy person, mm-hmm. but you got to let go sometimes. Sometimes people like every single thing now is turning into it. And it's like, maybe, right. but like the good, a good one right now is that Boeing have you seen that? Oh, yeah. That the that the, one's fucking... What? That the plane... The that's Boeing... Not a conspiracy. That's really oh, no. That's not a conspiracy. Yeah, you're right. Right, right. Yeah. Or you mean... You're thinking of like things people are just like really obsessed with. No. Well, the guy was about to... Uh, like a whistleblower for Boeing. The planes, mm-hmm. you know? And he was about to like expose all of this stuff. And he was like saying, if anything happens to me, this and that. And, and then he found him like... Yeah, he said he killed himself in his hotel room like the day before. He oh, my God. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw people posting Boeing, but I thought they were saying that that was the airplane that the that was the type of plane that the doors fly off all the time. That too. That too. <laughs> yeah. So I thought Pete, that like had happened recently and then people were posting like, oh, shit, I'm on the Boeing. He killed himself in the middle of his deposition, which never happened. Yeah. yeah. If it was before, though, that would make sense. But yeah. I mean, what could you have exposed? Do you know how he killed himself? Did they say? Well, at first, basically. I heard he cut both his wrists. That's what I heard first. No, that was from like a show we watched recently. What was that? We watched that one documentary or something where the, they said it was uh, someone committed suicide and they 
and it cuts both their wrists. And you're like, how can you do that? Oh, okay. Maybe <laughs> That's like maybe a good I'm blending watch. things up. Well, how did they say he killed himself? <laughs> At first, they said he hung himself. Okay. okay. The authorities got in contact with the mutual fund, but they were still going close that anymore. Now they're saying he shot himself in the back of the head. Uh, in the back of the head? In the back. The back. <laughs> 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 that doesn't happen. Well, I mean... You can't really get those two confused. But like those those conspiracies are pretty crazy though, because like it just makes you think like, well, like who who's that person that they sent in to kill them? Like how how do you trust that person that much? Like yeah, that, there's like a thing of like assassins or something. Yeah, like they if like Epstein didn't kill himself. Like who's who's that guy that yeah. went killed them? Yeah, that's crazy. Like who is that? Like how do they trust those people? NDAs. This would probably just like threaten to kill them if they like, right? Yeah, I guess. I, I don't, don't know. know. They do yeah, they probably do. Probably do. Conspir- <laughs> conspiracies are everyone. so fun, though. Yeah. They're so fun. The only ones that really don't grab me at all, though, are the alien ones. Aliens are like the most basic. Aliens is like Olive Garden of conspiracy theories. I think so. It really is. <laughs> like, if you're into like, oh, there's aliens and. Miami or like shut the fuck up. That's like, like like back in the day, remember at the uh like the tabloids or I forgot what was it? Uh the Weekly Inquirer. Yeah, like yeah. It would be like the Loch Ness monster scene would be a newspaper. Yeah. Like the tabloid whatever. Remember it was like uh the yeah. wackiest Yeah, yeah, weird stuff. Like the Loch Ness monster or something yeah. in a magazine. Really. No. That uh, shit does not grab me at all. I just like yeah, to me it's just like it's like the same thing as like Harry Potter. Th- th- those ones like, I don't even count. That's just like for retarded people. No, but I'm saying aliens is like that. It's like a make believe thing, and some it's people think boring. real. And I'm like, I don't know. Even if they are, I don't care. Like, I like the shit about like who runs the world. That type. Of yeah, thing. yeah, exactly. I'm not saying there is or there isn't aliens. I'm just saying I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. And it's just I'm not into that. I'm not, and you know this. You're a little bit more. I'm not into um, pyramids. I have appreciation for them, and I think it's really it kind of is like one step below the aliens. Kind yeah, of. it's kind of connected to that a little bit. Yeah, I like the aliens. I, or I like the pyramid stuff. I mean, I can appreciate it, but it's like okay, but like I'm not like uh, it's crazy. It like, definitely is crazy. It is, though. but I I can not go down like hours of videos talk looking at how crazy it is type of thing. Yeah. Maybe I don't have an appreciation of it, but I do. But I think if it is the same as like. When you see like a beautiful church in Manhattan and you're like, how did they build that? It's like the same thing. I'll tell thing. you how. Tartaria. <laughs> well, I don't That's know what that means, <laughs> but. What? Yeah, the ancient world. Oh, I don't see. I don't even know any of that. That's a fun one. But that's all I'm in. I'm into now. What's going we could on? do we'll, next time we get on. We'll do like some real conspiracies. Okay. There's some that I really like. I'm I, I'm into them, but I don't know like everything about. I it. listened to a podcast today about uh, like not, I don't know like conspiracy, but like the it was about the shroud of Torin. Do you know what that Mm-mm. is? Do you know what the shroud of Torin is? It was like the cloth that they say that it was wrapped in Jesus, and you could see his face on it. I think like, like maybe like, I've heard of that, but I don't know what's. But that's like a like a. You know, it's not just a wacky conspiracy. Like, yeah, uh, it's been debated for like thousands of years. Yeah. But you definitely know more about conspiracy theories than me. I just know like the surface level stuff. I'm pretty good. I know enough that I don't. I know enough where I be- now I believe everything I hear. Well, it's not that I believe everything I hear. It's I believe nothing I hear. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't believe. And I never believed in any conspiracies like before COVID. I thought everything me too. was so ridiculous. 100%. But now like I'll listen to like an hour podcast about like flat earth and yeah. Antarctica and stuff. And I'm certainly don't believe that, but I'm like, maybe, maybe. exactly. That's how I think. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I believe pretty, I mean, I don't believe you're not a anything. flat earther, but you're not like a ride or die baller. I don't believe anything. Okay. So, but it's like, can some conspiracies believe everything? Like they believe like, ev- like atheists wacky. Yeah. I don't believe anything. Yeah. In terms of what, like, in terms of just like, anything. like I, I don't believe like anything like mainstream really, but then also I don't believe anything like wacky, like, you know, like Anunnaki stuff or, you know, I, I, but I just, I don't know, maybe 
maybe everything. That's what I. That's what I believe. But you believe in God. Yeah. So that's like something. But that's kind know? of the same thing. Like I saw someone talking about that today. They're like, "Oh, well, what created the universe?" And then an atheist would be like, "Well, nothing." Mm-hmm. And be like, "Well, some something had to happen." And be like, "Well, that something is God." Like God is like the, when he when you boil down all conspiracy theories, this is what they always say: like all conspiracy theories eventually lead you back to God. Mm-hmm. Like every single thing you you because you question 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 question. And then like kind of like the most simple explanation for everything or the most insanely preposterous explanation for everything is God. Right. So like every all the conspiracy theories kind of like lead you back to God. That's kind of like not conspiracy theories, but if you go down enough rabbit holes, you will become religious. It's interesting because like like I grew up. I grew up Catholic. I went to Catholic school. I like, grew up beca- more so my family. We went to church on Sundays, but we, my family wasn't like die. Like we talk about religion all the time, but I went to Catholic school where there it's like, you know, you do everything. I was very pretty religious growing yeah. up. And then, you know, and like when I was like middle school, high school, and I when I stopped going to that, when I stopped going to Catholic school and was reg- in public school, I kind of we would only go to like to church on Christmas. You know, we were busy mm-hmm. on the weekend with sports and all that. And then college and after that I just never really thought about religion anymore. I just didn't think about it. And I don't know, I thought it was more just getting older and you start thinking about okay, when you have kids, are you going to like make a big like not make a big deal but like teach them religion, but then I'm like, well, we don't go to church, so we're, that means if we do that with our kids, we got to start going to church. I've just been more interested in like kind of in religion and God. And I think I never, I only started feeling that way after COVID 100%. and I swear to God, it's funny. Cause now I'm like a conspiracy. You just said, it. I'm like, I'm a conspiracy person to the point where I don't believe anything and I'm question everything. So if I feel like if you don't believe anything, you wouldn't be into religion. Cause no, you that's wouldn't what, believe no, 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 that. That, that, that. That's actually the opposite of that okay. because being religious like to be religious one would say oh you have faith and faith is having a belief in something that you have no reason to believe in Mm -hmm. no evidence okay like to be religious you have to have faith there's no like x there's no scientific explanation Mm -hmm. for it so like if you question everything and then you just you believe it like yeah you know that's what that's what religion is it's questioning everything and then you get to a point where you you decide you're like i don't care i don't know but that's the reason and it could be like i want to believe in that Mm -hmm. yeah but you, it's just okay, faith. that makes sense. That's what faith is. Because it ha- is funny. Faith is having belief in something for no reason. Okay. Yeah. But if you go down enough like conspiracy yeah. rabbit holes, you become religious. We should bring some up. Oh my God. Yeah, I'd love to. But I feel like. But I'm, then another thing. Oh, oh sorry. No, I was going to say I have to do research because I don't know that much about it. Another thing, like when mainstream pushes against an idea or like tries to like shadow ban an idea or discourages like the more they discourage religion or the more they discourage something then i'm like oh well that's true or that's like that that will push me into believing something the opposite like yeah i agree with that anytime they say something all of a sudden i'm like wait why do they want oh we have to go the opposite like i would have always thought like Again, I don't think the world's flat, but the fact of how much they like shadow ban, like the flat earth people, like, you cannot say that. You can't say yeah. that at all. You're not allowed to say that in any, on any fucking platform. It'll yeah. just get deleted, deleted, deleted. But, Way like, more than like. Why the fuck is that a thing? Like if you made an Instagram page, the Loch Ness Monster, I don't think it would get deleted, but it's just as ridiculous. Yeah. Or the sky is or green, like Bigfoot. red. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, if you made an Instagram of Bigfoot sightings, I don't think it's getting deleted, but. Or even like aliens a little right. bit, but. Well, but the fact that they push so hard against that, that's the only reason where I'm like, fuck. I wouldn't be Maybe. shocked. Yeah. But it doesn't make sense. Like, what advantage do they have? People will say, like, oh, they want you to think that you're just a meaningless floating through space. I mean, but I'm like, do they really give a fuck? Yeah. But the reason they push back so hard on that, that's the only thing that leaves me like the if there's like a mill of mm-hmm. fucking tiniest little possibility. Yeah. Like you said, maybe. Yeah, maybe. That's the but best way to describe it. Yeah. 
these yeah. are people are gonna come after you now yeah <laughs> people yeah. get super passionate about those that one that fun. one's yeah because that but, one's like the people that are passionate about that they've been they were like kind of the first conspiracies no the the first like real pre-covid viral, conspiracies are like like the historical ones the yeah Rothschilds is always like a fun one 9-11 9-11 one if you start looking into that you really but like those are historical conspiracy theories now it's like oh like you know just stupid stuff like anything you can think of yeah yeah like dairy queen blizzard commercial and they're like they yeah, like they the, the have hidden, sex with little kids in Dairy Queen parking lots or like something. The hidden like hidden symbols, yeah. like people who are really into symbolism and like yeah. numerology, like that stuff gets a little wacky for me. Or like words, shapes. Like they'd be like people who are like, well, that's why they call it a library. And what's in a library is books, and books are filled with lies. Like yeah, they tie, yeah. Like words into it. I'm like, like, shut the fuck up, man. Like, <laughs> English isn't like the only language in the world. Yeah, like, yeah. They don't I call it a that. library in France. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's, you know, it's, people tie into like numbers, like. All right. That's funny. Like, try to get like six, six, six. Yeah, I don't even know what that means. And, like, when people yeah. say numbers or something, like, like Freemasonry symbols. Yeah, or, yeah. It's funny because I know that people do that with numbers and like the times, and people are always mm-hmm. like, "This is." And like, I teach like a women's class, and the one girl came in late, and they're like, "Oh, she came in," and and the other girl, and a couple of the girls were like, "Oh, yeah," and look at the time because it was eleven, eleven, and I think I'm like, "Oh, yeah, it's crazy." Like, I don't know if that's 1111 is like a spiritual number or something well, like it, it the girlies be... like that, the time or like astrology yeah, girls yeah, like that. Yeah. And I like, I didn't know what that meant. So I had to, I was just like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But there's all kinds of things that they add this number and that number. Numerology is a bit. But those Shapes ones, too. Are, those ones don't really grab me because I think it's so far fetched and you could like make anything yeah. like that. Shapes too. Like geog- uh, geom. Yeah, yeah. What's that word? Yeah, like symbolism. Yeah. Yeah. Like pyramids and triangles. Yeah. There's four side, four yeah. corners means this and the devil and all. Yeah, oh, yeah. Crazy. But um, yeah. But like, I love that stuff. But I like the stuff, the deep, like who runs the world. Yeah. Stuff. Like who's connected and who's, what yeah. are people doing and how are they getting away with Cause it? Because the, the really, when those webs are really crazy because everyone is like super connected. Oh, yeah. There is something to that for sure. I don't think that's a conspiracy at all. You got to watch uh, Succession. Yeah. I watched it and you weren't really into no, I it. No, I got to watch it. it. That's all it is. That's if, yeah. that's what it is. It's like, it's insane. It's so good. Yeah. I would watch it again. There's all, it's, there's not that many of them. And I yeah, think, it's that same thing like powerful families. Because oh they still God. talk about like the powerful families from like that. They were like, well, no, those are like the Jesuits and mm-hmm. the Freemasons. And they came from, you yes. know, it goes so far back. I love that stuff. Where they all have like blackmail on each other and different yeah, people. And they, they, I mean, talking like yeah. hundreds of years ago. Yeah. But. That's the stuff I really like to talk about. Maybe we'll have someone on and talk about just that stuff. Yeah. I like really can... only have one like good friend who's really, really uh, knows that shit. Who? Who? Andy doesn't know anything. No. No, Tim Carpenter is my oh, only friend. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, he's really like educated in that. No, but he's really educated. You know who else is really educated in that? Who? who we could have on. He's super educated in that is Ben. Oh, yeah. He does know a lot. Ben sends me the best podcast, Jiu-Jitsu Ben. Yes. He knew he was the one that told me about the whole he knew all about like the UFC trial. Oh, dude. And that lawsuit. Everything. I was like, wait, what? He's like, you know, you could get money. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, when did you get in the UFC? I told him the year. He's like, there was like one year where I, I like was in you it. You probably would be like, I don't want this money. This is stupid. <laughs> I was like, he's like, you could get it. They sent me stuff in the mail. I was like, what is this? I didn't even read it. But Ben knew all about it. I mean, it came out now. There yeah. was headlines this week about it. But before that, he knew he no, he knows that conspiracy shit. He listens to that girl, Whitney Webb. You ever listen to her? <laughs> that fucking girl. She researches like the best ever. And everything is tied in. And it's all the exact same shit. Really? It's this person, this person, this person, this person, this person. And it's like that MI6 and Mossad and like. I don't know uh, any of that. Those are all like the CIA, but like MI6 is oh. of like London and like Mossad is like Israel, like all that. Everyone's mm-hmm. like connected through that shit. That stuff gets so fun and deep. We should have someone on like Ben or Tim Carpenter. Or both. Just we could do one shit. of each. 
Or maybe, That'd maybe, be fun. maybe we could see if people are um, into it. No, everyone's into that shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone's into that shit. <laughs> and you know who else is into that shit? Like in a big way? Who? It's Frankie. You ever listen to his podcast? Oh, yeah, yeah, he He's is. He's getting wacky. Yeah, with that yeah. Stuff. Yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> his podcast is good now. Yeah, well, because we're talking about that. Yeah. You like that. Yeah. That's I stuff- listen to it all the time. When he used to just have, uh, we're talking about uh, Frankie Edgar's podcast. Yeah. When he used to just have like fighters on, I never listened to it. But yeah. Now he talks about like fucking wacky shit. Yeah. It's awesome. He's had some good guests too. Really wacky. Wacky. Yeah. Wacky. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's good. Um, yeah, so let's pick up with that next time. Yeah. Um, thank you guys for listening, and uh, we'll be back next week. Bye.